Hello, Bethany, Bethany Church. Church. We are counting the days until we come, and we've been sorting and packing, and we're um, trying to get ready to go, and it's been a lot of work. Yeah, can you imagine 22 years here at this church? So we have a lot to go through, but we'll be ready in just a few weeks to be with you. I want to share with you this morning a scripture passage for us all together to meditate on and pray over over the next few weeks. It's from Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 19. Isaiah 43 and verse 19. It's up here on the screen. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not perceive it and see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry waste land. And I just believe this is exactly what God is doing. He is doing something new at Bethany Church. And I'm excited with you to be a part of it. I would like us all together over the next few weeks to be praying two things in your devotional times. The first one is this. Would you pray with me? God, open our eyes to the great things you are doing and help us to join you. Again, God, open up our eyes to the great things you are doing and help us to join you. And then the second prayer is this. God, pour your precious Holy Spirit out upon our church. Oh, God, pour your spirit out upon Bethany Church as we move into this new thing. We're looking forward to and are getting very excited about being together with you. Deus te abençoe. God bless you. Good morning, church. Wasn't it wonderful to see from our soon-to-be new pastor and his wife, Dave and Karen? Um, we are thrilled uh, that they will be joining us shortly. I laughed and smiled and uh, sent him a message earlier this week saying, you really tried to speak Portuguese. I'm so proud of you. You're better than I am right now. <laughs> so um, how wonderful it is that we can be hearing from them. Um, we pray, again, as they have requested, um, as they are preparing to come, that we may also prepare our hearts for them to come. May we be praying in these upcoming days for these transitions. Um, stand with me as I pray over our service as we begin our time together in worship. Heavenly Father, may your spirit dwell in and among us. You are welcome here. We recognize that since the time that we woke up this morning, you are drawing us here to this place of worship today. We thank you for this opportunity to uh, stand here, be present here, safely worshiping the one true God. May our hearts and our ears and our minds and our souls be open to the work that you want uh, for us today. And may we fully surrender in worship to you. We love you. Amen. Stay standing with us as we sing today.
I will be reading Matthew 24, 1 to, to 24. <coughs> Tendo Jesus saído do templo e ia se retirando, quando se aproximaram dele os seus discípulos para lhe mostrar a construção do templo. Ele, porém, lhes disse, 
não vedes tudo isto, em verdade vos digo que não ficará aqui pedra sobre pedra que não seja derribada. No Monte das Oliveiras achava-se Jesus assentado quando se aproximaram dele os discípulos em particular e lhe pediram dize nos quando sucederão essas coisas e que sinal haverá da tua vinda e da consumação do século? E ele lhes respondeu Vede que ninguém vos engane porque virão muitos em meu nome dizendo Eu sou o Cristo e enganarão a muitos e certamente ouvireis falar de guerras e rumores de guerras Vede, não vos assusteis porque é necessário assim acontecer mas ainda não é não é o fim porquanto se levantarão nação contra nação reino contra reino e haverá fomes e terremotos em vários lugares porém tudo isto é o princípio das dores então sereis atribulados e vos matarão sereis odiados de todas as nações por causa do meu nome nesse tempo Muitos hão de se escandalizar, trair e odiar uns aos outros. Levantaram-se uns muitos, levantar-se-ão muitos falsos profetas e enganarão a muitos. E por se multiplicar a iniquidade, o amor se, es se esfriará de quase todos. Aquele, porém, que perseverar até o fim, esse será salvo. E será pregado este evangelho do reino por todo o mundo, para testemunha a todas as nações. Então o fim virá. Quando, pois, virdes o abominável da desolação de que falou o profeta Daniel, no lugar santo, então os que estiveram na Judeia fujam para os montes. Quem estiver sobre o eirado, não deixe-se atirar de alguma coisa. E quem estiver no campo, não volta atrás para buscar a sua capa. Ai das, das que estiveram grávidas e as que amamentaram naqueles dias. Orai para que a vossa fuga não se dê no inverno nem no sábado, porque nesse tempo haverá grande tribulação. Como desde o princípio do mundo até agora não tem havido e nem haverá jamais. Não não tivessem aqueles dias sido abreviados, ninguém seria salvo, mas por causa dos escolhidos, tais dias serão abreviados. Então, se alguém vos disser, eis aqui o Cristo, ou ei-lo ali, não acrediteis, porque surgirão falsos cristos e, e falsos profetas, operando grandes sinais e prodígios para enganar, se for, se for possível, os próprios eleitos. God bless his word. You may be seated. We have a couple of announcements here before we move to our time of uh, giving of the tithes and offerings. Um, we have a couple of great guests with us today. Um, I hear that uh, Dr. Duarte is here, one of our general superintendents. Um, we are pleased to have you with us today, um, being a part of our worship service. Thank you for joining us. We also have um, Arnaldo and Phoebe coming from the Mount Hope Baptist Church. Um, they are good friends of Reverend Delgado, so we're glad that you guys have joined us today as well. Um, a uh, couple of announcements. We have a second work day. We had a work day last weekend, uh, yesterday rather. We had a work day yesterday um, at our empty parsonage preparing for Pastor Dave and Karen to come. Uh, we will also have an additional work day this upcoming Saturday. I would say probably 9 a.m. Is that correct, Lottie? Um, 9 a.m. If you want to show up, I will be bringing my son and my husband this upcoming weekend. So uh, Lottie, save some painting for Abraham to do, okay? Um, so if you are available, go ahead and mention something to Lottie or Jeannie. We want to go ahead and make sure that the property is set for Karen and Dave to come. So we do have some painting that's left over. We've got some other cleaning, um, dusting things. Um, so check in with Jeannie or Lottie and they can go ahead and get you set up for this upcoming weekend, uh, 9 a.m. And I think this past, uh, yesterday finished about noon. Does that sound about right? So nine to noon if you're available to uh, come and participate as we're preparing for our new uh, lead pastor. 
Um, additionally, I have a video that Manny is uh, prepping for us. We have alabaster um, offering coming up at the end of this month. We uh, collect alabaster offering twice a year. Go ahead and watch this video. <laughs> uh, we collect our alabaster offering twice a year, um, so this video will go ahead and give us a little bit more information if uh, you need a refresher on what alabaster offers, um, the help for other churches, as well as if you're new to understanding the concept of alabaster. So take a look at this video and then I'll be back in just a second. In a small town, a group of 30 people meet to worship at an evening service. It's cold out, and the single room where they meet is heated by a small wood stove in the corner. There is only a little bit of room left by the time that everyone crowds in and has a seat. Worship songs are sung from sheets of paper passed around the room and the aid of a single guitar. When finished, they say a word of prayer and the pastor brings a small wooden box to the front of the room that is shaped like a church building. He explains, We have a tradition of giving what's called an alabaster offering together. It goes towards helping buy properties and buildings that are used for ministry all around the world. Sometimes it goes towards church buildings, sometimes schools or hospitals, and sometimes other properties that support missionary work. Basically, the alabaster offering is all of us chipping in with other churches for properties that are needed for the kingdom. When the offering is given, adults and children alike come up to drop their offerings through the small slot in the roof of the box. The kids are excited to drop the small coins that they have been saving for the occasion and like to hear the sound that it makes. The pastor prays that God would bless this offering to the building of the kingdom around the world. Months go by, the weather turns warmer, and the meetings carry on as they had. One Sunday, the pastor preaches about the power of prayer, and towards the end of the service, he reaches behind the makeshift pulpit and gets out the small box. He says, Now I want to encourage you. Do you remember when we gave an offering in the box last winter, and prayed that it would go towards God's work around the world? Well, it did. Our alabaster offering, along with the offering of many other churches, has gone towards a new church building in Botswana, Africa. Our prayer was answered, and so was the prayer of the church that is going to be using that building. I think it's great that we were a part of that. And there's something else. This might be upsetting to some of you that have grown attached to meeting here, but we aren't going to be meeting here much longer. You, you see, our district superintendent called me last week and let me know that our church is going to be receiving alabaster funds to purchase a place of our own. It won't be long before we're in a place with some room to grow. Our, uh, our church denomination, the Church of the Nazarene, has long held the principle of understanding that our church is not just this local church body, but it is a global church body, and we are here to serve each other around the world. Uh, so as you are preparing in your own homes, uh, collecting your change, um, collecting money, we will be taking that offering at the end of this month, September 26th. Out in the foyer, there is our own makeshift box church um, that has been set out there. We will go ahead and move that to the front of um, our sanctuary at the end of the month. There are also little boxes if you'd like to go ahead and be collecting it in your own little boxes. Again, the children love to go ahead and do that. I like to do that too. Clink, clink. So if you don't have a box, then you can go ahead and uh, pick one up in the foyer on your way out uh, today. And we would love to join together at the end of this month to collect alabaster money. I'm going to go ahead and call our ushers forward. They've been patiently waiting at the uh, end of our um, sanctuary here. And I will pray over our weekly tithes and offerings. So if you have not already placed money in the box or if you've not already uh, paid your tithes online, now would be your time to go ahead and 
participate in our tithes and offerings. Heavenly Father, you deserve all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. And everything that you have given to us, we are now called to give back to you. Please receive these tithes and these offerings, these monetary funds, just as one way of which we can give back to you, some of which we have received from you. We recognize that um, we are called to do this as Christians, as people who believe in the one true God. We are called to give back from which we have been received. So may you take these and use them to glorify your kingdom. May you use it to prosper your kingdom in more ways than we could ever imagine. We love you. Amen.
have come now to our time of prayer. Of course, we recognize that we have already been in prayer, many of us, as we are being drawn into this time of corporate worship. We recognize many of you have already been praying as we sing today. Um, but now is our, our dedicated time of which we can come together, we can pray together, we can participate in this prayer together. Um, recognize now we do have the opportunity to come to the altar freely, safely, um, our Father draws us to the altar. The altar is a, a place of which is sacred. Um, I often talk to Abraham about we don't walk on the altars. Um, we don't dance on the altars, per se, um, but that this is a sacred place. So if you feel that there is a need that you need to bring to the altar, something that is personal to you, something personal to your family, you can go ahead and come to the altar, and the Lord hears you. There's nothing extra special about the altar aside from that it is just a sacred space if you need a different place than where you are seated now you can come if you have a, a great glorious praise for our father come to the altar it is a sacred place of which you can worship and be thankful to God for recognize that it's not just a place where you can bring your needs um, and confess your sins but you can also praise God and thank God for all that he's done in your life so as our worship team leads us in a, a song of prayer and thanksgiving, may you come to the altar if you feel so led and otherwise um, prepare yourself in your position of where you're at for your time of prayer.
as our team heads down, place yourself in a position that is conducive for prayer for yourself. And let us come to our Heavenly Father. Father God, what better place than to be in your courts, to be in your presence, to be in your house. We are so thankful that we have the opportunity to come to this church building, your house of prayer, your house of worship. And we worship you today with glad and sincere hearts, regardless of what has happened in this week, whether it have been a wonderful week full of praising you, or it's been a week full of trials where we're not sure that we can really make it to the next hour. You have carried us when needed. You have walked hand in hand with us throughout this week, and we have come to thank you, to thank you and to praise you for all of who you are. You have created us for relationship. You have created us to be in relation with you, to journey through life with you, to be your servants among this world that so desperately needs the light. We are humbled, O oh God, that you have placed us, your vessels, in this world. We are humbled, O oh God, that you have chosen us, of all people, of all creatures among this earth, to be in relation with you. Thank you, O oh God, for desiring to walk with us, desiring to live life with us, desiring to be in relation with us. We thank you, God. We thank you for, again, um, drawing and, and bringing a new shepherd for this pasture, a new shepherd in Pastor Dave and his wife Karen. We thank you for um, bringing them our way as, as um ones that will guide and lead this church into the next season. God, we pray even now, continue to prepare our hearts, continue to make us ready to receive this pastor, to receive this pastor with open arms, to be people of encouragement, to be people of grace, and to be people who listen and hear, willing to respond and participate in the life of this community, um, to encourage Pastor Dave and Karen as they transition here, recognizing it's hard to say goodbye. It's hard to leave what you've known for 22 years, and it's hard to learn something new, to learn of new people. So God, we, we ask that our hearts will be ready to receive, to minister, to encourage, and to greet. We pray for Pastor Karen and Dave as, as they transition and they have all of the emotions of grief and sorrow and excitement and nervousness, we pray, God, that you will be their sustaining grace through it all as they pack, as they drive, as they come with the first message. Be their sustaining grace as you always have been, and we recognize that you always will be. God, we pray for the state of our world. We pray, even now, that your will be done we recognize the violence, the sorrow, the grief, disaster. Our world at times seems like it's falling apart and we can't fix it in and of ourselves. We need your grace, your mercy, your wisdom and direction and love to be able to help this world. Through the violence in Afghanistan, the crisis going on politically, religiously, we ask, oh God, that you will offer mercy, that you will bring light in a dark place, that you will protect your people, and you will give them still attempting to pick up the pieces from this earthquake that was weeks and weeks ago after they've had one disaster after another. A couple of years, they rebuild another disaster. A couple of years, they rebuild another disaster. It may feel as if they have no hope. God, we ask that you will shine a beacon of hope through your people in that country today. God, we, we lift up our own leaders uh, within our own country. We ask, oh God, that you will give wisdom and direction to our president, to our political leaders, to our state representatives, 
to our town and city representatives, to our police force, fire force, medical teams. God, it is only through your grace, through your direction, through your strength, that we may have leaders that can help guide and shape us appropriately. We ask, oh God, that your will will be done, that their ears may be open, that their hearts may be open, and that they may seek the good for the most, that they will see the, the need to offer assistance to the lowly, that they will see and humble themselves and recognize the whole rather than just those that may rise above monetarily, um, that the rich may not continue to gain power, but that those that are poor in spirit and poor in finances may also um, receive dignity and be cared for. We ask, O oh God, for the health of our people. We recognize that it has been a trying week. Having spoken with just a handful of our parishioners, God, we have people that are mourning. We have people that are, are grieving over the death of loved ones. Some are grieving over multiple deaths due to COVID, due to other health concerns. It has been a heavy week. God, we ask that your mercy and your peace may draw close to those that are grieving today. And for those of us in this congregation that know of those that are grieving, may we be the hands and feet of you, that may we be those that can comfort those who mourn. Give us the wisdom and direction on how to comfort our people and care for our people in a time of need. For it is when, you, when we rejoice that you rejoice, and when we grieve, you grieve. May we be your people ministering to your people today. We ask, O oh God, that you will continue to have your hand and touch upon those that are dealing with health concerns. We have a number of our extended church members, uh, family members of those that attend our congregation who are battling cancer. God, have mercy. God, have mercy upon your people. We know that you are the great physician, and if it is your will, that you will heal. If it is your will, you will give another day. If it is your will, God, may we accept your will. And Heavenly Father, as Reverend Elgato prepares to come now at this time and to preach your word for your people, may you hide him behind the cross. I know that he has prepared this message for your people, feeling that it is your word for your people, so may he be your vessel today. May we once again have open ears and open hearts to your message. May we not have um, closed, hardened hearts. And may he speak your truth, whether, whether it is easy to hear or not. May he be a truth speaker today. We love you and we praise you, and we continue to worship you even in this time of hearing our sermon. Amen and amen. Good to be here. Many years ago, uh, one of our general superintendents was on vacation and he was traveling by car and he stopped in a town on a Sunday morning. And uh, being a good Christian, a good Nazarene, he thought that he should go to church. There was a Nazarene church in that town so he went to attend the service. They introduced him in the service. They called on him and uh, mentioned his name. And they, the pastor thanked him for attending service that morning. And he went on with the service. At the end of the service, when the pastor went to dismiss the congregation at the door, he asked him, what's your name again? And uh, 
the general superintendent told him, let's say Eugene Stowe, for instance, it was another one, but, and he said, well, it was good having you, and any time you are around, do you live, are you local? No, no, I'm not local, but any time you are around, come and visit us again. I don't know if they fired that pastor or not for not recognizing his general superintendent. I mean, that was embarrassing, and uh, I would like to know what he thought, what he did, after he found out that the general superintendent of our denomination was in the service, and he didn't recognize his name. That was embarrassing. Do you want us to repeat that story today? No, we are not going to because we have the great privilege of having Dr. Eugenio Duarte with us. And, uh, you know, he's so thoughtful. I, I called him the other day, but instead of picking up the phone and answering my call, he said he would come personally to talk with me here. That's why he's here today. Well, and uh, he must be feeling at home because we have a good group of Cape Verdeans here. But more than that, we have a good group of people from his only island, Brava. God must have a great sense of humor. A tiny country in Africa called Cape Verde, from there, not only that, but Brava is the tiniest island in Cape Verde. And it was exactly from the tiny island, from the tiny country, that God called the young man and saved him and equipped him and called him not only to be a district superintendent in Cape Verde or a regional director, but God put him in a place of great responsibility and honor to be one of our general superintendents. Dr. Duarte, we recognize you. We recognize your name. Though you are wearing a mask, we still recognize your face. And I'm guessing if uh, you have a word for your church here today and people of God. I don't want to be fired, you know. Good choice. Good choice. Right. Thank you. 
Muito obrigado. Prazer muito grande ter o, o nosso irmão, Dr. Eugênio Duarte, conosco. E obrigado por ter escolhido estar conosco nesta manhã. Uh, if you are able to stand, I would like to finish our Bible reading. As you know, we are a bilingual church. We have been a bilingual church for many, many years. And today, as our sister Nish read the first part of our uh, Bible reading in Portuguese, we are going to finish in English. Matthew 24, we are going to start with verse 30th. 24:30. Vamos continuar a leitura que a Nish começou em São Mateus 24, versículo 30. At that time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and all the nations of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the fourth winds from one end of the heavens to the other. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it's, it, it is near, right at the door. I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, not the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Up to the day, Noah entered the ark and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. Therefore, Keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Father, we are grateful for this day. We can turn to your word and become aware once again of the signs of times. Be with us, anoint our mind, lips, heart, and anoint and bless your people today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. In uh, the Portuguese Bible study, the studies have revived our awareness about the signs of the end times. Jesus spoke at length about the end times, as you know in the Bible. The disciples wanted to know when he would return to earth again. But he did not give them a specific date or deadline. Some people say they are more productive under pressure, 
so they can afford to procrastinate. But for the coming of our Lord, we do not have a deadline. We should not procrastinate our preparation. We do not have a deadline. Jesus only gave us some hints, some signs, and some prophecies. The disciples asked Jesus two very important questions. I don't know if you are asking the same questions today as well. First question, when will this happen? Verse 3. Second question, what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? As much as we would like to have specifics or a time frame for the second coming of Christ, it is not possible because Jesus didn't give any. We should praise God for keeping these details from our reach. We are called to be prepared every day and not just for the end times. We must not procrastinate in our preparation and readiness for the second coming of Jesus Christ. There have been many date setters, they call them, people who have disregarded what Jesus said. Jesus said of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, not even the Son, but the Father only. Bernard Eller said that it seems that these time setters want to sell tickets to the Battle of Armageddon rather than humbly obey his words to occupy themselves until he returns. We praise God because we do not know about our future. If we knew about our future, we could become either negligent or overwhelmed. Jesus' advice is, therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on that day, on what day, your Lord will come. No one knows about that day and hour. Not even the angels in heaven, not the Son, but the Father. You know, some uh, sects or called religions of today have appointed several dates for the second coming of Jesus. It is not surprising that they all fail in their predictions. Though we do not know the exact time Jesus will come back again, in his mercy, he gave us great hints and signs about the end times. The emphasis should not be in knowing the exact time Jesus will come back, but the emphasis should be in preparedness, in watchfulness, and faithfulness. So be prepared, be watchful. Be faithful until he comes. God gave us at least four uh, important signs that we'd like to mention this morning. Number one, he gave us political signs. As we read in his word, he gave us political signs by saying, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. The other day in our Bible study, I told our folks, uh, hearing all these thing happening in our world, it seems that the Bible or this chapter was written this week or last week. So up to date, the Bible, the Word of God is. The prophecies are being fulfilled before our own eyes. These last few weeks were rich in events describing 
in the Bible reading, described in the Bible reading today. You'll hear of wars and rumors of wars and nation will rise against nations, kingdom against kingdom, famine, earthquakes in various places. Afghanistan, Haiti, California, Greece, Turkey, Italy, Germany, Portugal, Mississippi. We are talking about earthquakes, floods, fires, wars, rumors of wars, etc. Unexpected events for those who do not know Matthew 24. All these phenomena are taking place in our days today and we are witnessing them. How to pray for this world? How to pray for peace? How to pray for our leaders? We really do not know how to pray. There is much confusion in the political arena. Corruption, lies, political correctness to fit personal interests, even laws to accommodate the politicians and help them get some more votes. It is scary to see what laws they are passing in this country and around the world. The Bible says you'll hear of wars. We have seen war in direct on life on our TV screens and rumors of wars. We do not know what's going to happen here and there. People are afraid. The affliction of the people from Afghanistan these last few weeks, it's very impressive and scary. Nation against nation, you'll hear and see, and kingdom against kingdom. You'll hear and see famines and earthquakes in various places. And Jesus said, all these are just the beginning of birth pains. Our world is in a great mess. A few days ago, I received a report from Global Kingdom Partners Network, a Christian organization that support and pray for the persecuted church in the world. And uh, the information was quite disturbing. And of course, they had Afghanistan in mind. It says... Reports from the Christian churches in Afghanistan are dramatic. As the Taliban advance, many missionaries are fleeing, trying to save their lives and escape from slavery, torture, rape, and death. They are leaving everything behind. Many local Afghan pastors have problems leaving the country. Some churches in Takinistan are opening their doors to pastors and Afghan Christians that are able to flee the country. The Taliban leaders have declared that every girl, 15 years and old, not married yet, will be distributed to the Taliban soldiers to be impregnated. Let's pray and fast for our churches, our brethren in Afghanistan and the entire nation as a whole. Jesus gave us these political signs that are ex happening right now in front of our eyes. But he also give, gave us uh, religious signs. And uh, the Bible tells us here, many will come in my name claiming I am the Christ and will deceive many. They will come claiming they are Christ and deceive many. Multiplication of gods, cults, and religions. Leaders from some denominations or independent churches have called themselves all kind of big names, bishops and prophets. But lately, I, I, I noticed that they, some are calling themselves apostles. They upgraded their own position in the religious world. People running after titles. 
They need the title. So it's not good enough to be a Christian. I am a Christian. It's not good enough to say I am a pastor. It's not good enough to say I'm a missionary. Now I need to let them know that I am a bishop. And more than that, I am an apostle. It seems that we are running out of titles for people who want to replace Jesus Christ. Not too many people are willing to say, I am a servant, or to pray, make me a servant. We want titles. Many will come in my name claiming I am the Christ and will deceive many. Friends, we are living in the midst of a great religi religious confusion. Not only because of many denominations, but especially because of the new denominations and religious groups and sects. Many want to have their own church, independent church. Independent churches are springing up everywhere. Years ago, our DC superintendent asked me to talk with a gentleman who uh, had been a pastor in our church and uh, things went wrong and he wasn't serving anymore, but graciously the district was willing to invite him back and forget about the past. But he would not accept. He said, I want to have my own church. I want to be my own boss. And this is what we are seeing all over the place. People against being accountable. They don't want to be accountable. I want to be independent. All these are the beginning of birth pain, says the Bible. So not only we had political signs or hints and religious signs, but we also have natural signs. And he, as we saw here in, in the Bible, uh, in verses 26 uh, and all, if anyone tells you there he is out in the desert, do not go out. Or here he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will sh be shaken. We have the sun will be darkened. The moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Natural signs. We have heard and seen the devastations caused by the tsunamis in, in Asia. We are in living in difficult times. Yesterday, America honored the memory of thousands of Americans killed 20 years ago during that, those ter terrible uh, attacks, ter terrorist attacks. But we also have spiritual signs. Jesus said many will turn away from the faith. Many will turn away from the faith. People who have been considered faithful in the church will turn from their faith. It is frustrating and sad at the at, at same time to see people rejecting God's grace. This is one of the most difficult periods of Christian ministry. Some, the Bible says, will betray and hate each other. Can you imagine Christian hating each other? It's bad enough when we do not get along in church or in our Christian community. It's better long, but the Bible used the strong words, Christians, hating Christian, doesn't sound right. Men will be deceived, and false prophets will appear and deceive many people. 
The word many keeps coming up. But like the Apostle Peter, before he denied Jesus, he knew Jesus. We might be saying to ourselves, not me, Lord. Not me. I will be faithful to you to the end. Even if all my brothers and sisters in church deny you, I will remain faithful. Jesus sounded frustrated and especially sad on the Mount of Olives when he was looking at Jerusalem. From the Mount, Mount of Olives, you can look down and see the big city of Jerusalem. It is impossible to go there and not remembering those words of Jesus Christ when he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather you, to gather your children together, as a hand gathers her cheeks under her wings, but you were not willing. You were not willing. So it's a matter of willingness. You were not willing. And this morning I ask myself and I ask you too, are you willing to come under Jesus' wings today? Are you willing to be accountable to him? Or you just want to say, no, I, uh, I want to be independent. I spoke with a lady that uh, is not from this state some time ago, and I have had the opportunity to counsel her once in a while. She has some strange ideas about the way to follow Christ now. She has been adjusting herself to new doctrines. And uh, she got under the impression that uh, this man that was dating her would become her husband. But there are so many obstacles to that wedding or that marriage that uh, I, I, I tried to help her open her eyes the other day. I said, are you aware of what is going on? She is depressed now and uh, ma a mess. She said, uh, well, we, we did it our way. I said, but are you, are you ready? Is he ready to marry you? No, we already did it. How did you do it? No, we, uh, we exchange our vows in between us, the two of us. I am. Uh, any legal action, any license? No, no need for license. We just exchange it, exchange the vows ourselves. We want to be independent. We, we want to, some people want to rewrite the scripture again. I was invited to a service in one of these independent church the other day. A friend invited me, so I went. I was curious to find out what was happening there. And uh, I realized that the leader, the pastor, he has a time to call people and heal people. And, and, you know, he does everything there. I didn't see any dead person coming to life. But other than that, it seems that he does everything there. And at one point, he, uh, I believe he was a little uncomfortable and with my presence, and he invited us, you can go. I'm going to pray with people now, those who came to the altar, but the rest of you, you can go. I didn't go. I stayed there. I waited. To, I wanted to see what was going to happen. And he started praying for people and healing people and doing miracles and so forth. And the last person, it was uh, at the altar, was a lady, and he started saying, I know that your marriage has problems. I know that your husband has problems. I know that you are going through a difficult time in your marriage, in your home. But I'm here to heal you and hold, uh, heal your marriage and your relationships. And the lady turned and said, I am divorced. 
He was so embarrassed. He didn't know what to say. I said, but you know, you are going to find someone to marry you. And we'll bring you to this church and I will marry you right here. So there is a solution. We are living in difficult times, my dear friends. Many will be offended by the word of God. Many will betray their friends. But the gospel of Jesus Christ must be preached. And I pray that God will help me and help you to be ready, to be prepared, and to be faithful. We have all these great signs in front of our eyes. We need to be salt of the earth and light of the world. Jesus said if these days were not abbreviated, even the chosen one would be lost. The gospel must be preached. It's our hope. Men will be offended. We'll betray one another. The prophecies we read about today are here being fulfilled. Of course, we have the short program that took place in the year 70 after AD. 70 AD. But we have this long program that will be fulfilled at the second coming of Jesus Christ. We are called and encouraged to be prepared. The signs are multiplying. They are even talking about the Third World War starting in the Middle East. As someone said, however, we have the theology of hope. And hope means freedom to live victoriously in this confusing world. Despite what is going on, we have the power of God to guide us. August Berg said, we learn from the past and take our course from the future as we live by his promise in the present. The angel told Jesus' disciples on the day of his ascension to heaven, the same Jesus who has been taken from you to heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him going to heaven. And the apostle Paul wrote, but our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the glorious promise that we have. Are we ready for his second coming? Are we aware of all the signs and hints Jesus gave us? Not a deadline, not an exact time, but he said, you will see the things, and these things are happening right now. Preparedness, watchfulness, and faithfulness are our task today. Are you prepared? Are you ready? Are you watchful? I guess we have a chorus, we have a song. And as uh, the worship team comes, I would like to invite you to look, not around, not behind, but in your own heart. Are you ready or distracted with the things of this world? Jesus is encouraging us. He is coming back. He is coming back. Let us be prepared and ready. And today, if you want to come to the altar, or if you want to pray where you are, if the Holy Spirit speaks to you, saying you are not ready, you are not prepared, remember, the second coming will take place like the thief of the night. No warning, no deadline, not a set date. Be ready. Be ready.
listen to God prepared preparedness watchfulness and faithfulness are our task for today father we want to thank you for bringing us to the house of prayer this morning we know that we are living in a very difficult world what you said many many centuries ago are happening right now i pray that you may open our eyes and you may help us not to redefine christianity or doctrines but help us to humbly seek your presence and have the gospel the word of god the power of god for salvation father help us not to be distracted with technology with wealth well-being a lot of things around us but help us to focus on christ the day the hour are unknown but we have these signs that are very clear help us not to be distracted but help us lord to be ready and prepared for your second coming or if you choose to take us from this world help us we do not know about the future we know nothing about the future but we know that you are here today to bless our lives you are here today to prepare us for your second coming you are here today to bless your church lord we pray for the persecuted church around the world those who are having a hard time just trying to follow christ we pray for those who uh, have been deceived and they are creating their own doctrine and they want to be independent they don't want to be uh, to be accountable to anybody lord help us help us to forget about titles about what is surrounding us but let us pray today make me a servant make me a servant lord bless your church and bless your people and help us to be faithful we don't want to be deceived we don't want to be lost but we want to be the light of the world and salt of the earth help us today rekindle your holy spirit the fire of your holy spirit in our own heart and use us for your glory we pray that you may continue to bless the bethany church anointing our new pastors and bringing them in the power of god and lord help us to uh, not to continue to be as we have been but help us to see a great revival in our hearts in our midst for the glory of god and for the salvation of souls we pray in jesus name amen and this benediction for you may the lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else just as ours does for you may he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our lord and god and father when our lord jesus comes with all his holy ones make us be faithful until then in jesus name amen god bless you let's be prepared let's be ready Let's be willing to follow Jesus Christ. Thank you.